Hello out there, Ronnie Bincer, the Hangout Helper, with some friends helping making sure you know how to schedule your time efficiently. Last time we did a show using a tool called doodle.com, and there we were taking multiple people and trying to help them easily get to a meeting time where everybody could agree that this was the best time to meet without a bunch of emails going back and forth. Today's show, we're going to talk about another tool called youcanbook.me, which is going to allow you to, as a, let's say, a provider of a service, to allow someone to choose from a list of available time slots. So you can have your appointments set, ready to go, and say, this is when I'm available. Click here if you want to book me. You can book me. So that's where the name came from. And my trusty friend that's going to help me explain all this stuff is Trevor. Trevor Beck, say hello to our friends, please. Hello, guys. Great. And as a special guest, we've got someone from youcanbook.me. This is Bridget Harris, all the way from the UK. Thank you for being part of our show today. You're welcome. Thanks. Great to be here. Wonderful. So, Trevor, would you mind helping us understand, uh, at least from your perspective, what the power behind youcanbook.me is? And by the way, those of you viewing it out right now, if you click right there, if you've seen the show afterwards, there's going to be a link later on, and you'll be able to go to the prior show that we did with doodle.com. Today's going to be youcanbook.me. And uh, if Trevor, if you would help guide us and understand the use case and who it is that's booking whom, that would be really cool. You're sure on. thing. So uh, just a, a quick refresh. With doodle, the, the idea of doodle is to answer answer the question, and they would all select times that would be available. Bridget actually had a great phrase for it, it's herding cats. You're trying to figure out when you can get everyone together. With you can book me, it's a bit different in the sense that I know that I have a set of times or schedules available, and I want people to come and take a look at my availability, pick at a time that works for them, and have it get scheduled. One of the great things about you can book me is, is that it ties in directly with Google. The calendar. So me as the provider, as you mentioned before, I can set this up and as a person takes a look at my availability, they're actually looking at a window or a snapshot of my calendar, my Google Calendar. Uh, Bridget explained to me the other day that it's not a syncing between their service and then to Google. We're actually using APIs to connect directly to Google Calendar. So what you see is what you get. And one of the beauties of that is that uh, if I make a change in my Google Calendar, it automatically gets reflected in the, the displayed calendar or the availability calendar that's presented by You Can Book Me. So there's a two, ways, uh, two different places that you can make changes because they're actually linked together, and, and it's not linked, it's the same file per se, those changes are automatic and uh, there's no fooling around with it. Did so that why, is, why, why is that important for the average user? Well, some of the, sometimes, um, some some of people are more comfortable in Google Calendar. I mean that. I mean you and I have had this conversation about the the difference of using Google Events versus Google Calendar, and a lot of people are still very, especially you know. I mean I'm an older person. I'll I'll admit it. I like the calendar functionality. Bridget, is he breaking in some up cases. on you? Yeah. Okay. So Trevor, your your feed unfortunately is a bit of a problem right now, but hopefully it'll clear itself up. But you might need to leave and come back if that's important for us later. But the bottom line is, I, if I understand you correctly, we can make some of these edits once we've got things set up. We can make some of those edits if we wanted to inside Calendar, instead that's correct. of inside the other tool. And based on where we're most comfortable, that's going to be the ability to edit wherever we want, right? That's correct. Okay, so that, that would be my summary as to why that all that nerdy stuff matters. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I'm going to have to come back because something just happened here on my screen. So Okay, I, well then we'll see, see you in a, we'll, see in, we'll see you in a little bit and okay. I will talk with Bridget and Bridget and I will have a wonderful conversation about youcanbook.me. So Bridget, I have a question for you. Um, sure. Who is the average user or the most frequent user of your product, youcanbook.me? Um, I would say um, the most common type of user is is uh, the sole trader or consultants or people who are working um, uh, where they basically need, they don't have a PA, they don't have a receptionist, they don't have somebody to take diary um, appointments for them. And so when they're working, it's hard for them to answer the phone and, you know, pick up 
um, requests for a booking, and so they use You Can Book Me in order to do that job for them. So they're, do, bu they're busy actually running the business rather than trying to schedule the next round of business coming yeah. in. Okay. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I would say that um, if you like, one of our biggest competitors is the old-fashioned... The old-fashioned something... Okay, um, Hangouts and me are having fun today. This is the Hangout on Air show. Hopefully, Bridget is going to come back shortly. Um, here I am alone. So here we are. You Can Book Me is a wonderful program that's going to allow me as a person to schedule time that I'm available so people can come in and actually say, hey, Ronnie, I want to meet with you on this time. When are you available? Instead of actually looking through a list, they can just, instead of, instead of actually bugging or talking to me and working it out, they can just go to that area, click on it and say, yep, I'd like to reserve this spot with Ronnie and boom, there we are. So Bridget, you froze for a moment and I don't know what's going on. It's just a fun time with Hangouts. So I'm not sure where you were at except we were describing the concept of what, what your tool allows people to do most easily. And yeah, if and you want to sum that up, then we'll see if Trevor can come back and... Sure. I mean, it, just to follow on, really, from what Trevor was saying um, about the reason why people like You Can Book Me is because it is, it is aimed at people who are already using Google Calendar to manage their own time, to manage their resources, to manage uh, groups of people in universities, you know, a whole variety of things. And they've already got their whole world set up on Google Calendar um, and then you can book me just slot straight into into that existing system So we're really not asking them to change the way they work or to change their system at all You can book me just gives them this ability to precisely create appointments in their calendar and um, As I was saying that our main competitor if you like is the old-fashioned big book handwritten method of taking appointments and so for consultants and sole traders who realize that they um, can just put their availability online within certain parameters and they can control it as much as they like. Um, so that whilst they're delivering their driving lessons or they're, they're doing somebody's nails or they're cutting hair or they're, you know, they're in a coaching session, um, then they can, be, they can uh, be taking appointments at the same time as actually doing their work. Now there's a question out there in the stream right now is um, and it's asked by Michael Daniels. I'm going to work on your second question here, Michael. It says, can you limit or change who can book me at certain times and or dates? Yes, you can. I mean, it, it, the system is, is really a, pretty unlimited in terms of the, the, the different versions you can do. So within, a, within one You Can Book Me account, you can have more than one profile. We call it a profile. Um, so you can have a profile. So for example, here's a classic example. For my You Can Book Me scheduler, I have two schedules. Um, one where I'm available in the mornings during the day and in the evenings because that's when I'm doing things like this, when I'm talking to America. And then I have another scheduler where I'm, it looks like I'm only available during the day and that's for my UK appointments. But both those profiles link back to the same Google Calendar. So you can create as many different profiles as you like with as many different configurations as you like when you're targeting different types of appointments. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Um, Trevor, you're back, I think. I, I hope so. There's, I'm getting some kind of plug-in error. I haven't seen that ever before. So, uh, can you hear me though? Yes. Okay. How about we get started before something else happens? Okay, go for it. Okay. So I'm just going to start off by taking us to the uh, you can book me you can book dot me page. Can you guys see all that there? Yes, we can. And what okay. I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be full screen so that when you're screen sharing, we can see as much as possible. So that all that means, Bridget, is that you and I are voices behind the scenes, so we can still talk. Okay. So simple, you can book dot me is the, is the website. And all you have, I mean, you can go through and take a look at how it works, the features, the pricing, the demos. Um, go to your dashboard is usually the way I, I go in. And if you're already logged into your Google account, you'll get this login here. In fact, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Bridget, even if you're not logged in, you'll get the option of either clicking of the Google login here or the email, correct? 
Yeah, that's right. And and the email address is there so that um, if you wanted to, uh, more than one person could log into your You Can Book Me account and mess around with settings without having to go in via your Google. So the, the Google login is, is just a very, very quick and easy way because, of course, we're con di directly connected to your Google login. Um, you could just click that and go straight through. But for if you're trying, if you're sharing your settings with other people, obviously you don't want to give them your Google credentials. So you can set a password to the account itself, and that's how you would get in via the email address. Okay, good. And so, and for me, I just like because I'm already logged in, and I'm logged in as Jazz the Poodle. Um, some of you may be familiar with Jazz from the last uh, session, and we can take a look at our dashboard. I'm actually going to start. At the, by click, whoops, go back, try this again. I'm going to go and take, uh, take a look at the manage of the dashboard because this is where things is where we start. Um, earlier, Bridget was talking about profiles, and I'm going to start with one profile. For me, what a profile means is it's the part of the service and it deals with the messaging that I end up having to send off to whoever is going to um, look at my, my calendar. So when they pick a a time slot, there's certain messages that I want displayed on the screen, there's certain messages that I want emailed to them, and I can manage that differently by different profiles. So I start off here with stress therapy with Jazz the Poodle. <laughs> well, Jazz is very, you'll see, Jazz is very busy and very important. And this is the first screen that, that comes up when you, when you first log in. You have the option right down here to put in the booking link. So this is the URL that you're going to choose, and of course you want to choose something that makes sense. Trevor, can you do um, there, uh, can do a do a command plus or something? Zoom in a little bit more on that so we can see that a little better. There you go. Is that, that working helps. better? Okay, yeah, let me just. Uh, no problem. So, um, so there's there's whatever URL you want it to be. You can add a logo in. I suggest you don't make a huge logo. This is the title of the page that the person's going to visit, and any any text that you want to put on it. So the page itself is, looks like this. This is what my visitor is going to see when they click on this link. I've kept this very simple. There's ways of embedding this onto your own site or else you can take and add code to the, uh, the CSS on the header to make it match your own site uh, ahead of time. But I'm just going to stick with something very basic and simple. You'll notice a bunch of times here that are in green that are available. You'll notice some times here that, that aren't available and these are all part of the settings that we're going to look at in the next few steps. They're all part of the settings we're going to look at in the next few steps? Is that what you said? Yep. Okay. Yes. So here's the times. So I, I look at this as someone who's, who's a full-time person. This is their job. So for, for Jazz, because she's a, she's a stress release dog, you know, you, you get stressed out, you want to come and book some time to pet a puppy, this is what she does. And from 8 o'clock to 7 o'clock, uh, Monday through Saturday, those are the times that she's available. Um, you'll notice here on Sunday I haven't put that in because I, don't, I want a break or I want her to have a break. This is the fun part. Display, number of slots, 30 minutes. You can set up whatever um, appointments you want. So if you want, you'll notice here it's 30 minutes between 8 and 8.30, 8.39. You could do 60 minutes, whatever, whatever you feel uh, works best for you. The default booking I have set that for 60. Now whatever default booking I set has to be an increment of 30. So the minimum could be 30, the maximum could be whatever we choose down to the next level. But you'll notice because this is 60, because 30 minutes of petting a poodle is just not enough, um, you'll notice when I go and highlight a time, it actually is highlighting one hour, because that is the default setting that I'm setting, that I'm, that I'm asking for. Does that make sense so far? Yep. Okay. And we can display the number of pages, when do we want it to start, and here's a good one, lunch is between 12 and 12.30. So you'll notice that time slot is actually not available. Nice. Okay, and we'll come back to this on-duty events in, uh, a little later, because that's pretty cool. Go to advanced, uh, minimum notice. What's the minimum that someone can book a time? Uh, you know, if I have to travel somewhere, uh, I don't want two hours or three hours. I might want two days before I uh, can commit to someone. So that's what the minimum notice gives us. Maximum advanced booking. I mean, we don't want to be booking four, you know, four years in advance. Maybe you only want to book two months at a time just, um, just so that you can keep yourself organized so you can do that. Okay. Um, the time zones and stuff. This is one of the great things about the way that uh, 
you can book me has done things is you'll notice on my time zone is set up for where I live but if you were to take a look at actually if uh, Bridget was to look at it um, and Bridget you're in England I mean, you're somewhere, correct? London. Yeah. yeah okay so it would actually be set to her time so these numbers here that says 8 o'clock, that would actually be 3 p.m. for her all the way to, someone do the math because I can't, um, 9.30. So it automatically will sense where and try and do the best that it can to, to match those dates and times. And if it doesn't, you can always go in and select the different choices there to make sure that you get the right date. And that's very cool for people like you, Ronnie, because I know you work with people who are traveling in Japan and Australia and whatever, whatever. This way, you don't have to worry about that because I know every time you, you do an event or something, you always that post you say, yeah. um, whatever it is, Mountain Standard Time, which is such and such a time wherever you are, and you know we've had to do that whole uh, right the global the, time. the global economy here. Yes, exactly. CAPTCHA, um, pretty straightforward. As someone fills out this form, they have to put in a simple CAPTCHA. Uh, fixed start and end date. So let's say that I'm going on holidays, so I may only want to book a certain area to make myself available. So I know I'm going to be going on holidays, um, let's say, after end of July. So my end date here would, would indicate that, and then they wouldn't take any more bookings after that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to go into any of this stuff here, um, the, the sample link field that's a bit more advanced. The override date pattern, if you like year, month, date, instead of date, month, year, or something like that, you could just override the pattern, that's all that means. And one thing I really want to point out that's really good about this site is the, the I here is information. And when you click on it, the detailed information that you get for each of this stuff is really well done. Hats off to you guys, Bridget, because it makes it so much easier to, to find stuff out. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Minutes clear before and minutes after. So if we have, uh, if I was a psychologist, and we all know the psychologist hour is only 50 minutes because they need 10 minutes at the end of the session in order to, to write their notes down and prepare for the next client that comes in, I could put this in here. So this would indicate that my um, minutes before is 10. That means, correct me if I got this in the right place, so 10 minutes before 10 minutes before that new appointment, I would have a break in there. So my times here would, re would reflect all of that. So does it actually show 10 minutes taken away from the number, or how? Do, where does that actually affect anything? Bridget, Bridget. you want to? So, um, so th this is a, you've, you've hit upon a quite an interesting bit of the settings, actually, which we're going to, um, in one of the next uh, planned rollouts, we're going to just roll those two things into one and just call it call it padding because very few people want a different padding time before their appointment and after um, and w the effect that it will have it's it's not really used for people who have very short appointments because the effect it will have is that if I book you nine till ten and I've set a ten minute padding it means I will no longer be available until eleven o'clock I it takes the next available chunk that it can that it can do to allow for that ten minutes so it can often just so it generally is used for people who are doing large booking so they, they so they have four hours or something and then they they want an hour um, before the next four hour booking or something like that in smaller increments it ends up um, taking a chunk from the next available time that so you have. For longer so, appointments it's useful but for the small ones it's not actually a benefit to you. Well I mean I think actually I would take the psychologist example and say quite a lot of what a lot of people do is that they they advertise a 50 minute um, appointment but then they only display one hour slot so they by default they get their 10 minute padding in there. Right, but that you don't need to actually do anything with your tool to have that reflected. No, so. exactly. You can just do that. And there's something, and there's a question that I can see on, on the right-hand side, which is, could you do 9 a.m. to 11, and then maybe 1 p.m. to 3 p.m.? And there's, a, there's another way of doing this when you're trying to get breaks into your, into your day, and it comes back to our earlier discussion about what the value is of having the thing... Uh, connected so uh, closely to Google Calendar. Is Bridget, it Bridget, you're, don't, don't don't give it away because that's the next set. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're gonna we're gonna address okay, that. We're in, gonna in jump the next... into that question. Yeah, okay. We'll, sure. we'll, yeah. Let's go back to the screen share now. You're on, Trevor. So okay, go for um, it. So I, so again, there's there's the dates and the stuff. Not much has changed from what we did. So I'm gonna go to the next menu item, which is the booking form. So this is how the form gets to. 
displayed when the person, so when they click on the link, the, the form will look something like this. Now, usually by default, the information that, that uh, you can book me a setup is booking, your email, uh, duration, and comments. And just like a lot of these forms that you can do in Google, you can add different elements. So some of the elements that I added is your name, uh, what kind of service do I want to add, and I put in price just, just for the heck of it. So here's the, here's the neat thing about this. Here's name, and I can put the text before it. I can indicate if it's a required field, and then I can choose from all these different types. So one line question, paragraph, checkbox. I mean, you can you can, you can do you can all read that. Trevor, Trevor, yep. before you get too far in, what is this form for? Where does this show up? In other words, why why are we caring about what we're seeing right here? Where is where is the user when interface see this? When they click on a time. Okay, so, so after check. they've chosen after the petter, the person that wants to pet the dog. After they've chosen a specific time, they are presented with a form, and this that we're talking about is how do we adjust what that form shows. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thanks. No problem. Sorry. So, uh, as you, so you can add a bunch of other forms from the default, and like I said before, there's whole different kinds of stuff that you can, you can put in there depending on what your needs are. Um, for me, I like forms, uh, to use forms, because I can get the information I want ahead of time. So I don't have to call back and say, you know, uh, I do a lot of troubleshooting. So what URL were you, you page were you on when you were when you experienced this problem? What uh, t what browser were you using? Those kind of questions. And instead of my having to follow up with an email, I can ask those questions ahead of time, which makes it a lot easier for me when I take a look at this stuff. Saves you time, right? So you as um, a service you as a service provider can preload the session by asking specific questions to the uh, user or the, the customer and then they hopefully will fill those in and you'll have those answers so that when you do your meeting you can be more efficient. Exactly. Okay. And, and you'll notice that you know, some of these fields are required so it's important that you can, uh, you know, for you to do your job properly and to be well informed you can do that. Okay, so this is a lot more than just you know, booking a time, this is not only booking a time, but gathering whatever information you deem is important from the client ahead of time so you can be very efficient with what you're doing. And that's what this form part plays in, or at least that's how I'm seeing it right here. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, so here's an example. Yeah. Here's here's an example of, of one of the because uh, Jazz has this service right so what kind of what kind of service do you want well do you want ear scratching belly rubbing hugging which is the stuff that you want to do with your your poodle time right okay. and you can go through all on and and, and build this whole thing uh, however you want and this is what the form looks like so there's all the fields this is the uh, text I put in ahead of time those there's my ear scratching and comments and stuff I can put in what the price is going to be and uh, what, a couple of cool things I want to point out. The first is, notice I have um, shorthand code, co code called service here. I've actually typed this in. I could call this whatever I want. For every question or field that I create, I can put in a service, or sorry, a shorthand code. That shorthand code can then be used, for example, when I send an email to this person, I can say, dear first name, you ask for the service and it will list whatever they selected and you'll see an example of that in a, in a bit when we do that nice the other cool thing about the uh, price is uh, well we'll come back to this one in a bit because I think there's a that's a little later one so for a lot of people um, you may want to have services and so one of the premium functions here is you can list your services and you can assign different prices and stuff like that uh, with the basic one, it doesn't come included, but there's some uh, more functionality with that services stuff, and, and we can ask Bridget more about that a little later. I just want to get through the, the first level of the basics. Teams is also a premium account, but this is where you could be working with, uh, the example that we talked about in the past was a hairstylist. I own the salon. I have 10 hairstylists. I can get all of their calendars in here, and a person can come in and choose either a time and not care who it's with, or pick a person that they're interested in getting their hair cut by, and the teams will be uh, linking their calendars that way. 
vouchers pretty straightforward if you want to add a voucher because you know the hangout helper you went to uh, you, you saw him at, at Houston in Texas during uh, the last uh, tech conference and he gave you a voucher for 10% off or whatever you can uh, add, have that added in as well okay I'm gonna add a voucher I'm believing is a coupon another name for voucher means a coupon some kind of a discount offer is that what that is correct and it allows you to track that Okay, so what 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 is this doing for me? In other words, the vouchers used message. What what would that be? And Bridget, uh, if you want to, f or go ahead, Trevor, if you know. No, I was going to say, ask Bridget. Why don't you, do you have an example? That, uh, I mean, maybe my hairstylist or Ron one isn't a good one, but if you have an example of another user for voucher. Yeah, you could. I mean, vouchers. It's it's it, it's just a way of validating a booking. So basically, you can book. You can preset. Um, Using um, the on the um, vouchers, if you go from the drop down from unique to from a preset list on that drop down uh, on a list of unused codes, if you if you select that, um, you can put in that box of unused voucher codes. As Trevor was saying, it can be anything. It can be, you know, it can be a, a list of predefined numbers that you've generated in Excel, or it can just be a list of lemons, apples, oranges, and pears. Okay. And um, and then you can book me. Your booking voucher uh, profile will require one of those um, uh, codes before it will validate a booking. So let's say that I only want I'm organizing something, and maybe I want to add an extra layer of privacy. I could say, well, your apples, your lemons, your oranges, your bananas, and then only those people who know those codes will be able to make the booking. But equally, I could make it a discount voucher so that I could say, you know, here, or let's say it's a gift voucher. So somebody who has bought a service for me for fifty pounds or fifty dollars, I can then give them a code, and they give that code or voucher to somebody as a present. And so, um, and there's two ways of doing it. You either can predetermine. The, uh, the vouchers showing that box as Trevor did, or it actually is a, it's an open voucher box so that somebody just puts anything in and as long as it's unique, it will validate it. So it's, a, it's a quite a, a, an interesting tool and people use it for all sorts of different reasons. Okay, can it be used, and this, I'll try to end it with this part, can it be used to say if you have a coupon code or a voucher code then the amount that's being charged is a different amount than if they did not have that code? Um, no, you can't. The, I okay. mean, although that is on the feature list, that is something that we're aware of. But at the moment, if you wanted to do okay. that, you need to have two different profiles. So, in essence, you're saying if you have a coupon code or a voucher, then you are allowed to book me. Otherwise, you're not. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. Let's move on, please. Okay, here's the exciting part. Afterwards, afterwards means what happens after they've booked their appointment. Okay, so I can display a message that says. Thank Thanks, you're booked. When the time comes, we'll be looking at, and remember I told you about that, uh, that short code? Right. There's the service. So it will list all the services that they checked off. So this is the message that's displayed on the screen. Mm -hmm. Google refers to your calendar as the person who created this. So Jazz, it's her calendar. This information gets entered directly into her calendar. So you can format this any way you want. I've taken, uh, I've gone in, I said booked it, made it the name, I've included the email in here, and it adds all this other information by default. So this but is the I mean, calendar entry that shows up on your calendar and potentially, the, or and or the customer's calendar. No, uh, well, put by default, no, because the only thing that's linked it here at this point is me as the supplier. The customer okay. is not linked into here. Okay, but I have a feeling something's so, coming with that in the future. In our presentation, maybe or am I possibly, possibly? Possibly. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> that, no, that's okay. So disappeared. So there we are, and he's back. Yeah, somehow I just appeared for a moment. You're much faster at coming back than I was. <laughs> I guess. Let me uh, check our settings here and make sure that we're sharing the screen as okay. We should be. You're back on. Go okay. For. So, so this is how the form. So the form can be can just, it's like a mail merge, but on the on the screen. And any of these forms that we uh, create or areas that we created in here, like the name, service, whatever new ones that we add, that can be added into these these short codes here. Same thing with the email that, uh, or sorry, the email that comes to me. I get an email because I want one. I'm going to go to this email address, 
And by default, it comes to us by notifications from Softly Software, the owners of you can you can book me too. There so is a premium the version. email comes to you. You're talking about as a service provider, right? Is that what that, we're? That is correct. So okay. it lets me it lets me know that I got a, a, a that something's been entered into my calendar. Somebody right? booked you. Somebody booked you. Yep. Yeah, and it got entered into the calendar. Okay, and then the next one, if you wanted to get SMS, a text message. Um, okay. I'm, not, I'm just going to scroll through these really quickly. So here's the email that goes to the user. Sometimes you may not want to do this, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but for the most part, everyone likes to send an email off saying, and this is the message, your email booking from your name. This is, again, the uh, standard template look. I can add my logo in it. And remember the start and all these short codes? We can customize something different uh, or the same thing as what we have that views on the page. One of the nice things about it is there's actually a cancellation link that comes into this. So here's the message that I get, or, or sorry, the, um, the, the customer gets, and there's the, the message, there's the logo, and if they want to cancel this booking, they can actually click on a link here. And we'll talk about that in a couple seconds. Okay. Um, again, text message to the user, and this is an advanced feature that allows you to tie into to something else. I haven't used it. Do you, do, can you briefly uh, address that, Bridget? So when you look at webhooks, yeah, web, web yeah. Hook, yeah. So webhooks is a way of pushing the the data from you can book me out to another system like Mailchimp or Salesforce. Okay. So when you when you're it's a it's a way of connecting it. Okay. So that that's about all I want to really talk about at, at this point in time. What I want to do is actually take a look at what it looks like to to do this to actually book this. So this is the page. So I would send the link out, which was stress therapy with jazz dot you can book me book dot me and I would send this link out to whoever it is that I want to to um, book a time for the services too yeah okay so and I want to I want you to notice see how these times here are all um, all taken up if we look at jazz's calendar that's these dates here because of course these are her this is on her personal calendar we're only using one calendar right now and so she's got her feeding schedules and her naps again as we talked about before she's got a a poodle spa and she's got some group therapy sessions uh, set up and because she's got all that in Google Calendar they're all automatically reflected in here if I add something to the calendar it would re be reflected on this page here so if let me add, let me ask another question if I am the poodle and I'm on the calendar and I decide you know what I need to make I need another I need another walk I need to go out on a walk so I don't want to be available at a certain time if I block off a time on the Google Calendar, will it automatically block it off on the You Can Book Me end? Yep. Great. So I guess you're doing it now. You're putting in a walk. Yep. Why don't you and make that's... it, okay, make it big. Make it a big chunk so we can see that that whole space is really uh, not available for booking. Okay. There nine, you go. Nine to one, because I know you're you're into that. Yeah, big walk. <laughs> okay, so now we go back that to the stuff. You Can Book Me. Can refresh. And you might need to do refresh, okay. Yep. And there's that chunk right there. Right. Okay, good. So that so, is important to me because, like you said, if I'm comfortable using Google Calendar and that's where I need to go add something because someone from outside of this world has required me to go on a walk at a certain date and time, yeah. I want to put that in and it automatically makes those available spots no longer available to my clients. That's pretty cool. Correct. I like it. So now we're looking at this page now, and I'm the client, and I'm going to go and pick a time. So I want this 2 to 3.30 slot in Saturday. And there's the form, so I'm going to enter my name. So I'm now... And my... So this is the client side, meaning when someone's ready to book the poodle. Yep. Bridget, have I you can... ever had bookings of poodles before? We do actually. We have we have a, a dog grooming salon that really love us and use us really regularly. And um, I can send you the link. But they have they do have lots of pictures of dogs. It's very nice. Okay. So yes. But actually, but someone not, booking not the uncommon. services of a poodle. I thought that um, was that is slightly different. But you no. know, it, 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 it's all tastes. <laughs> well, yeah. Bridget, feel free to, feel free to feature me on your website. Okay. <laughs> so, so so there's our so belly rub. I want some. 
it says one hour and 30 minutes. That was a drop down that you could adjust, or is that something that was automatically put in there? Remember when we were back here, uh, whoops, you can book me under times. The the minimum time. was 30, default is 60, maximum right. is 90. So that's where those numbers are coming from. Okay. Okay. Right. But when you when you actually chose the pretty colored calendar, you clicked on the green thing, and then it brought up this form. And the form I would assume would have been just an hour because I thought that's all you clicked on. That's that's what it did. Yeah, it okay. did have the hour as a default, but it, we can go in and, and change that. So you can adjust that from here as well. Yeah. One of one of the things that I neglected to mention is. Uh, with with you can book me under payments you can indicate what it's going to cost so i would said for twenty five dollars for thirty minutes of of poodle time and that's just part of one of the other menu items notice what happens here uh... when i go to thirty minutes watch the price it's twenty five dollars because that's what thirty minutes is mm -hmm. but if i choose an hour it's now fifty Nice. If I choose an hour and a half, any five. So just like if uh, for people that go for massages, right? Uh, mas massages that I've been at, they're usually minimum thirty, maximum of an hour and a half. You would indicate the price based on whatever they're charging per thirty minutes. Okay. Okay. I want, and of course the capture that we talked about earlier. It's in G T. Oh, except for Trevor can't spell. Let's try this again. <laughs> is it the captcha? So, Captures are always fun. You can turn the catch captcha off. Yep. And you'll notice as part of the uh, thanks you're booked, when the time comes, we'll we'll look at doing belly rubbing and hugging. Remember um, the services shortcuts? That's the, the two things that I selected that I wanted, belly rubbing and hugging. So it's out of, automatically been added to my confirmation message there. Okay. So. Now there's an email that's been sent to uh, to my uh, personal account, um, which I'm not going to bring up at the point. But when you get stuff in your Google Calendar, remember when you get a date that gets entered in, you can always just add it to the calendar by right-clicking on it. We'll demonstrate that in, in, a, in, a, in a second. But that's that's what you see right here is the whole Google interaction. It's all on my side as the service provider. So mm -hmm. Google doesn't get entered in from from anywhere else. But as, we, as we've seen in the past, when you get an email for, within Gmail, you can click on it and add that calendar date directly, directly into your calendar. Sure. Let me back up. I have you back up for just a second. Michael Daniels, again, is asking a good question. He says, what if you're available time an hour, but someone tries to choose 90 minutes? How does that work out? Won't well, show it. They wouldn't be allowed to choose 90 no. minutes? So if, if, if they picked, if you had, um, as Trevor was showing you, um, uh, times up of up to an hour and a half available, but they happened to pick just a one hour slot that was free. Then when it got to that booking form, it wouldn't have an hour and thirty minutes on the drop down. It would just have an hour. Okay, so it's based on your available time. They can't override that with a drop down. No, and I mean, and a slightly different way of doing it would be to choose services and set your duration through services. So if they'd already picked. And if they picked a 90-minute service, and it would only show slots that were 90 minutes available, free. Okay. So it can be driven by available time slots to begin with, or by what services they're interested in, which then only displays slots that work for that service. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. So that's that's the the, the standard way that we would most people would take a look at, at setting up their. Um, their information. There are other areas because I'm just watching our time. I just don't want to, to run too far. There, there, we do have a cancellation where we can set uh, whether we can allow people to cancel how many hours before the booking, uh, which is handy because I mean things happen, right? I mean we get sick or I can't make it or whatever. And but I mean it's not fair to you and I that someone cancels last minute. Where at least this way, if they decide you know four hours or so, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not feeling too well. I can cancel now. Right. I know a lot of professionals because they've booked that time and they make their money on that time. If you, you know, it's like a hotel. If you cancel less than 24 hours, you're still paying for that hotel room whether you use it or not. And the same analogy could be worked here with people's time because your time is just as valuable as everyone else's. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go to, to manage now. And I've created another profile. You said dashboard, you went to the managing area. That's correct. 
Uh, and so you can create new profiles. And as I mentioned before, one of the things about profiles takes a look at how you set your times up as well as messaging. So I'm doing another, uh, Jazz is also busy with doing poodle group therapy. These are poodles that have been stressed out by their masters. They come in kind of like a play date, but it's just poodle dates. And so it's a little bit different. So we're going to go and take a look at the editing. Now, and we've seen this page before. I'm just going to jump to times because this is where it's cool. So in here, the question was asked earlier, what happens if I want to break the time up? I want to, you know, a certain number of hours in the morning, on Monday, a certain number of hours on Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not a standard time from whatever. In this area, I put down all the potentially available hours that I going to be available. So for me as a, a nighttime person, this would be the kind of what my schedule would look like. But I don't want to be available every Monday night or, or what have you. And I'm, I'm trying to book these 60-minute uh, sessions. If we look at Jazz's calendar, she's got two sessions here called group therapy. Okay. When I take a look at the calendar for the Poodle group therapy, and I'll just replace Jazz's, uh, this old one here. So those were the yellow items, I believe. You made them yellow on the calendar? Yeah. So do you see the 6 o'clock and the 5 o'clock appointment? The Thursday at 6, Saturday at 5? Mm -hmm. That's these ones here. Well, if we take a look at the way you can book me and set it up, there's nothing here that says 5 to 6 or anything like that. What it looks for is what they call an on-duty event. Basically, anything that I add in the calendar with this as the title, that becomes an availability. Okay, so for example, I'm going to go back to my calendar here. Um, I've decided that, you know, from 7 o'clock to um, 8 o'clock, I'm going to make this available. Uh, I'm going to have a session here. So I'm going to type in group therapy. So this is on the Google Calendar side of things. Yep. I'll create this event. And the reason these were yellow is because uh, a lot of people just use one calendar, but they color code their activities. So what I've been doing is I go in here and I just say, yep, I'm, uh, I'm going to make this yellow. And this is going to be my, my and session. And you can make that show me as available, Trevor. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say. An important thing is uh, by default when you do these things, it shows you as busy, but you want to make them available because this is people coming in. Because all I'm indicating is, yep, this is a time. So, Michael, I believe you were asking what happens if I want to do something in the morning, something in the afternoon, and something during the lunch hour on Tuesday. That's how you would get around that. It would just look for anything with the word group therapy. So now I've got Friday from 7 to 8, and when I go take a look here and do a refresh, there's Friday at 7, 7 to 8. Does that make sense so far, Ronnie? Yes. So that's actually scheduling based on what you start with your calendar. It's the inverse. It the basically inverse. is the inverse relationship. So you're yeah. saying these are the slots that I want to be available, and instead of it being consistent all the time, you can just say here, 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 and here is where I want to be available, and let that show up in my availability place. Right. And, and I, what I've done is something a little different here. I'm going to show you. Um, under the advanced, units per slot is five. This means that I can take five people into one of those, one of those slots. Because remember, it's a group therapy, but I don't want to have a 1,000 poodles showing up. So I'm limiting it to five. So as a user, I would click on this. I would type in this same information, like whatever I did before. So uh, I'll just do uh, jazz. So because these are group sessions, you want to make sure that five people or poodles come together this one time and the sixth one can't come because you don't have space. That's correct. And it's 20 bucks there's just so they know. And I mean, and as far as pricing and cleaning and money and stuff like that, I mean, you can make sure that that's clear in your messaging and stuff, but, but uh, um, well, we'll talk about a bit about that in a second. So now I go over to my calendar. Actually, uh, it's in my dashboard, is it not? Um, Bridget, no, I've forgotten. It. How's that? If I go to my account, just click on Poodle Group Therapy. You wanted to go back to your same grid again. It's just at the top. The link's at the top. Okay, there's five available. Now I just wanted to see where on on you can book me where it shows me how many uh, how many people have decided to come into yeah. that session. 
would that be under well, view? So you can look at your bookings. It'll it'll it comes in as as bookings under your on your profile. There's a there's a um, there's a button that says bookings. It'll come in into your calendar as well. Okay. I mean, your calendar is the place where you would. Where's my bookings? So there it is. It says there it is. So sorry. So under the dashboard, and you go to your manage. You come to these two things. Uh, so there's my my poodle, and under bookings here, it will display that. Oh, where's so, on the bottom is where you were. It'd be helpful if you could say where your mouse is because it's a little small. Sometimes. Oh, so sorry. Yes. Yeah, so, so under the bottom profile, um, there's my bookings for this this area. When I take a look at it, there I can see who's booked, the time, and the duration. So I I know how many people have, are coming in. And when I look at my calendar, again, I'll refresh my calendar here. Did I book the Saturday? I can't remember. It says that you've got a booking there. Oh, yeah, there it is. Saturday. So there it is. And there's all the information that was sent out. And can I just add, Trevor, that if you wanted to set this functionality using units per slot, you could also give people the option of how many people they wanted to book. So you added that you would add units per slot on the booking form. So let's say you and your other, you know, pals wanted to all come along to Jazz's session. So you wanted to book on behalf of three. You could select three on the booking form, and that would take up three of those slots all at the same time. Okay. So people use this. Um, some of the people who, who, who really like using this are uh, people who go on fishing, fishing um, uh, tours in Australia. They do loads of early morning fishing tours, and they, they maybe have 12 places on a boat, and they'll use units per slot to book out those places. Yeah, it's a very it's very handy for you know doing that countdown thing, and you don't have to sit there and check your emails and go through your folders and make sure you've got you know so many booked here and so many booked that you can book me looks after that, which is really kind of cool. Um, Ronnie, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay. One of the things I'll try and zoom up again. One of the things I wanted to uh, show you. So, as as you, Ronnie, you would probably set or would set this up in one of the services or sorry, one of the ways you might want to communicate with people would be through a hangout. Mm -hmm. So if you're booking, one of your questions in the booking says, how would you like me to contact you? Do you want me to phone you? Do you want me to um, Skype with you? Do you want to do a hangout? And if they fill that out, what I've done is within the information you, is I, I include... What you've done within the information here. is, I'm just repeating because you break up at times, so what you've done within the information that's being sent to the calendar is? I can go in and I can copy this email address, I can enter it into here, and I can make this a video call. So that way I've now um, I've now invited the person and, and it'll be, if they have a Google calendar, it'll be added to, their, added to their calendar, but they'll also have the link to the video call. So if you're going to do a Hangout, I mean, uh, it's just one other way of, of, of easily setting that up. Right, because so far this is simply, this is, I'm not simply, it's sending me an email saying that somebody's booked at this particular time, but the actual setup of the Hangout is something I would have to do in addition, and you're saying this is an option where I can just get their email, add a guest within the Google Calendar, and check the, or click on the link that says add a video call, and this will turn this into a video call appointment. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I mean, you could also take that same information and do it through the Google Plus events, right? I mean, it's right. just six of one, half a dozen of the other. Right. But uh, for, for, again, for, for, for me... For what we've got now and what's working, that's a good option. Um, so I think, let me just go back to the dashboard. I think that's that's pretty much all uh, I wanted to to explain at uh, this point in time. I know we're up to 50 minutes. There are some advanced f features and stuff that are available. Uh, one of the the ones I really really like is this calendar one. So, Ronnie, I know you use a calendar. You use one calendar, correct? Correct. I have a calendar in, in in Google. One for work. I have one for my personal stuff. I have one for uh, my my kids' activities. So even though they're three different calendars, they show up as three separate ones. In the 
in the free version of this product, you can you, you're only seeing the one calendar, the main calendar. But if you take a look, Jazz actually has one, two, three different calendars that can be viewed. And so what happens is when the person goes to their the, the, the page here, it's not only going to show these events here that you can see, but my play dates events, we can see there's these other two uh, items here, as well as any as well as these other the Canadian holidays. So it allows me to have more than one calendar. And one of the great great examples they said on the site is, for example, I put down Canadian holidays. So if this was a holiday and I use this function here to have the Canadian holiday, you would see that November 11th for me is, is a day off. And then you would not be able to be able to book that. Okay, and you're saying that with the, the free version, you can do one calendar, but with the upgraded version, you can do as many as you want? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Right, correct. right, Bridget? Yep, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah, um, if you go back to the, the You Can Book Me page and you look at uh, features and pricing, those are the those are the set up to show you what, what you get. So here you can see the different, uh, for your free features, you can see some of the premium. Quite frankly, for 10 bucks a month, I mean, the services that you get in, uh, with that is, is, is amazing because you get, here's the extra ones, you can link to more than one calendar, you can... There is a link at the bottom uh, that has the full export list. Export your data. So a link at the bottom has a full okay. list. So yeah, this is the visuals. Let's try to wrap this up and with some Q and A here within the film strip, and we'll turn off our screen share and get our people back here. If you're good with that, Trevor. All right, so we're we're back here to the standard film strip where you probably can see us down here. So hi again. Um, that's a great overview. Let me ask a question because this is one of the things that was intriguing to me about this product. Is the upgraded version appears, and I want you to say yes or no, or it's wonderful, um, that if I offered services, for example, hangout sessions, I could actually let the billing for that session take place when someone says, yes, I want to hang out with Ronnie, click a button, here's my money, and then it moves on. And all that issue of trying to collect the funds before, after, whatever, is taken care of by this product or its interface with something like PayPal. Was I imagining that, or is that real? Bridget, Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. At the moment, I mean, that's, at the moment we take payments um, um, through PayPal, which we're not, you know, um, not over the moon about, because PayPal has its issues. We would much rather and want to move on to payment um, systems like Stripe, which are now taking off in America, but in Europe we are behind, unfortunately, and we're not allowed to take payments on Stripe. But when we get there, that's exactly um, as you described. And at the moment with PayPal, what you can do, you know the way Trevor showed the tentative feature to show the feature of um, the minimum period of time that uh, you can cancel a booking and that kind of thing. Right. Well, you can set bookings to be tentative so that unless you accept you get a payment within six hours or five hours or however long you deem acceptable um, then the booking would be accepted so the way it works is PayPal then tells you can book me yep we've got the money they've paid and then um, the booking gets automatically confirmed but if we never receive any payment or confirmation then the booking automatically gets rejected hmm. okay and that's available now that's that's working that's, now. that's available on the professional level accounts, yes. Um, and as I said, uh, we're, we're really at our last gasp with PayPal. And we, did ha we, um, we ourselves use Google Checkout and they're withdrawing Google Checkout. And it's just it's a notoriously difficult area of software, really, to get right for the payment, mer you know, the merchant peep guys. Would I, would I assume correctly that if we go for the professional services... Um, that you would be able to help us if we're running into issues with the payment processing, or at least the part that you can do. Yeah, of course, of course. No, I mean it's something that we, you know, well, we help every every user get up and running and 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 make sure that all their their questions are answered. But um, that any the, the the PayPal side of things, of course, um, are run through everybody's individual user accounts. All we do is we interact with Google's API, with uh, PayPal's API to talk to, for the two systems to talk to each other. So we don't take any money. We don't, we don't, we don't have anything to do with the, with the credit card payment as it, as it relates to your 
clients, um, all we're saying is that if you're taking a booking on the back of that payment, we can tell you that that payment's happened. Okay. Well, that's. I think that's very valuable for me, at least. Um, there, there was some other. There's some other questions that came come in while we were showing. Actually, I don't know if I, let's try this. We'll see how big it is and how hard it is to read. Can you guys read that? Yep. Okay. So it says this is from Michael again. So I can add five people. I want to invite to hangouts. Say I'm Max. He's using this as a situation. They will show up in the you can calendar as available, and my calendar will. St- will have just one color as the time slot occupied. I know I am not asking this correctly. Does anyone, do you know what he, he's asking? Can you I, well, that? the last part of the question is he wants, I think he wants to know if he invites five people, how does he know that that particular time is filled? Okay. And, and apparently I didn't explain it well enough, so I'm going to let Bridget. Well, um, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, the, I mean, you you can do the the at a glance thing when you look in. So I think it's something that we probably sh- it's it's worth us going over just one more time. Um, when you when somebody books you, you can book me handles the appointment. But then what actually happens is a physical event gets created in your Google Calendar. So if you wanted to look at a slot that a unit a uh, on duty event where as Trevor described, you have five slots free. You could just look at any day on your Google Calendar and see how many bookings you've got. And if you have three bookings come in, then you know you've got two slots free. Or if one booking comes in, then you know you have four slots free. So you can see them as events which are created on your, on your calendar. Um, the, another way of doing it is actually going to um, the, your You Can Book Me grid. And if you select uh, a time, and as I said, if you include the units per slot, field in your booking form and you, you look at the drop down, the system will show you how many slots are free. So let's say it's quite complicated and let's say we have people who use us to organize field sports, you know, f- football, um, soccer. Um, so they might be, um, they might have 25 slots um, available. So that's sort of quite a lot of events that are going into the Google Calendar. So they just use the booking form as a very quick and easy way to say there's 15 slots free on this particular time. Does that, does that make sense? Does that answer the question? I think it might, but I didn't ask the question. So, <laughs> Well, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, so I think the big, the big feature here is that in the form, there's a field there that represents number of slots left. Is that correct, Bridget? Yes, yeah, so you can. So if you set, if you have set that setting, say units per slot equals five, yeah. then in the booking form there is a drop down field which is units per slot, and so that will re- that will replicate the number of slots you have set until those slots start to get booked up. So you, if you keep on going back to that booking form, it will go from five to four to three to two to one, um, depending on how many slots have been booked. That information is also held in the description in the event, in the events themselves. So if you've included units per slot in that, an event comes in from somebody who's booked three, in the event description it'll say units equals three. So you'll see um, how many slots that represents. Okay, so I think that's probably enough of getting down into the weeds. Let's do a summary to wrap this thing up here. Um, It appears that this is a phenomenal tool, you can book.me to allow a provider of a service to post what's available time-wise and allow those that they share that information with to pick and choose those particular areas and times that they would like to utilize that service. And then the communication is handled by the system to go into your calendar as well as get sent to that customer that, yes, you've booked this time. And a lot of this happens automatically. And if I'm not summarizing correctly, Bridget, feel free to, to correct there, me. There's just one caveat, which and we, we brushed over it slightly, but it's just people might want to uh, know a bit more, is whether um, the system will, cr- will, will make a booking in other people's calendars, i.e. the people that book you. And it is, because you, you were talking about adding people as Google guests, and, and, um, and you could see in the setting there that you can add an iCal attachment. So it is possible that once somebody has booked you using You Can Book Me, that that information gets pushed to their calendar as a, if they're 
a Google user, then they can be added as a Google guest. We just have a slight health warning about this because in our experience over the years that we've been working with calendaring systems is that they're notoriously um, uh, 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 tricksy. So Outlook will have a different way of handling an iCal attachment to Google and to Yahoo's calendaring right. and right. any other system. So we, we really want, the health warning is that this is a very reliable system for you and your calendar. And okay. if somebody and then books how you, you how you right. communicate that to your customer is up to you to deal with. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. And so I think that, you know, until that is more standardized and everybody's using that same methodology, then that's probably fine. Um, and so there's been a follow-up to a question. I'm going to let Bridget or Trevor do that offline when we're done so that specific is covered there. But so... As summary, again, this seems or is a very good system, I think, and I love the idea that it can handle payment. That, to me, is a big deal. And so when and if anybody out there wants to start using it, uh, Trevor, Trevor, you can tell me if this is not true, that you might be able to help them through the initial process and if they want to go straight to Bridget and um, work with the company that actually makes it, I think Bridget might be able to help guide, right? Maybe I'm I'm offering yeah. both of your services. I don't oh, know yeah. if that's true. Sure. sure. Okay. Great. Okay. And so since we're right up on the hour, I do want to end the show and I appreciate everybody watching it. And if there are questions, feel free to add them in the comments and we'll try to get some expert answers to those. And hopefully in the near future you'll start seeing me use the service and you can actually book me. <laughs> the hangout helper. <laughs> so there we go. There's a nice summary for the end. Thanks everyone for joining our show today and we'll see you next time. Thanks again. See you. Thank you. Bye bye.